Bob Crane's Tragic Death, Unsolved Mysteries and New Insights. The Mysterious Death of Bob Crane, a celebrated actor best known for his starring role on the CBS television series Hogan's Heroes, remains one of the most intriguing unsolved mysteries in Hollywood history. Found dead in an Arizona apartment in 1978 under circumstances that hinted at a sinister subplot involving pornography and betrayal. Crane's life and death read like a script from a Hollywood thriller. Yet this story lacks a resolution. The investigation into his murder has captivated the public and investigators alike, fueled by the complexities of Crane's personal life and the seemingly inscrutable nature of his demise. This video delves into the enigmatic life and tragic end of Bob Crane. Uh, I love life. I'm an optimist. I'm the guy that always assumes no matter what's in that room, there's a pony hidden underneath all of that stuff. <laughs> Highlighting his early rise to fame, his peak as a beloved CBS actor, and his subsequent downfall amid scandal. It closely examines the circumstances surrounding his unsolved murder, shedding light on new insights and theories that have emerged over the years. From his early days in the entertainment industry to the chilling crime scene in Arizona, and the ongoing debates over who could have murdered the actor, the narrative weaves through the various phases of Crane's life and the ongoing quest for justice, including connections to notable figures. This comprehensive overview seeks to unravel the mystery behind the curtain of Bob Crane's storied yet tragic legacy. Bob Crane was born on July 13, 1928, in Waterbury, Connecticut, the younger of two sons to Rosemary and Alfred Thomas Crane. His family originally bore the surname Crean. During the early 1930s, the Crane family relocated to Stamford, Connecticut, where Bob spent most of his formative years. Influenced by the legendary drummer Gene Krupa, Crane developed a passion for music at a young age. By the age of 11, he was already proficient in playing the drums and soon began organizing drum and bugle parades with his neighborhood friends. Throughout his time at Stanford High School, he participated in the school orchestra, marching band, and jazz band, showcasing his musical talents across various local events. Bob Crane's radio career began in earnest in 1950 after a brief stint at Finley Strauss Jewelry Store. His first job in radio was at WLEA in Hornell, New York, where he quickly rose to the position of program director. Despite initial rejections due to his unique, fast-paced vocal style, Crane's persistence paid off. He moved through several stations in Connecticut, including WWBIS in Bristol and WIC in Bridgeport, where his innovative approach to radio broadcasting began to take shape. Known for integrating sponsors into his shows and using precise sound effects, Crane redefined radio programming. His ability to mimic voices earned him the nickname, The Man of a Thousand Voices. Crane's success on radio caught the attention of television producers. His charisma and wit led to guest hosting opportunities on the game show, Who Do You Trust? Hosted by Johnny Carson, and appearances on The Twilight Zone, Alfred Hitchcock Presents, and General Electric Theater. His most notable early television appearance came after persuading Carl Reiner to book him on The Dick Van Dyke Show following Reiner's guest appearance on Crane's radio show. This exposure paved the way for his casting in the role that would define his career, Colonel Hogan on Hogan's Heroes. The show was a hit, and Crane's performance earned him widespread acclaim, cementing his status as a beloved television star. Bob Crane's portrayal of Colonel Robert Hogan in Hogan's Heroes marked a significant milestone in his acting career. The show, set in a German POW camp during World War II, depicted the ingenious and often humorous efforts of Allied prisoners to outwit their captors. Crane's character, Hogan, was central to the series, coordinating various espionage and sabotage missions. His charismatic and clever portrayal earned him nominations for Emmy Awards in 1966 and 1967, highlighting his skill in blending humor with a serious wartime backdrop. 
Hogan's Heroes was not just a platform for Crane's talents, but also a significant contributor to television history. The show's unique setting and comedic approach to the sensitive subject of war distinguished it from other sitcoms of its time. It successfully ran for six seasons on CBS, maintaining high viewership and critical acclaim. The series was known for its lighthearted take on war, which resonated with audiences, providing both entertainment and a peculiar sense of relief from the typical narratives of World War II. Moreover, the show's ability to incorporate real-life war elements with fictional humor played a crucial role in its popularity, making it a staple of American television and later in syndication. The success of Hogan's Heroes catapulted Bob Crane to a new level of celebrity. He became a household name, and his role as Hogan significantly shaped his public image and career trajectory. Despite the show's success, Crane experienced typecasting, often recognized primarily for his role as Hogan, which both frustrated him and limited his opportunities in diverse roles. His celebrity status brought him into the limelight, but it also came with challenges, particularly as he sought to expand his career in the entertainment industry beyond the iconic character. Crane's struggle with typecasting was a testament to the deep impact that Hogan's heroes had on his professional and personal life, illustrating the double-edged sword of television fame. Following the conclusion of Hogan's Heroes, Bob Crane's personal life became a source of increasing controversy, which ultimately tarnished his public image and career. His association with John Henry Carpenter, a video technician, and their shared involvement in recording sexual encounters significantly impacted his reputation. Bob Crane's personal life was marked by tumultuous relationships and a highly publicized divorce. He married his second wife, Sigrid Valdez, on the set of Hogan's Heroes, where she played Colonel Klink's secretary. Their marriage, however, was strained by Crane's infidelities and sex addiction, leading to a bitter divorce process. At the time of his murder in 1978, the divorce had not been finalized, resulting in Valdez inheriting Crane's estate. This period was further complicated by revelations of Crane's sexual escapades, which were discovered by the public and media posthumously. Crane's sex addiction became widely known only after his death, when investigators found numerous videotapes and photographs of his sexual activities in his apartment. He and Carpenter had filmed their encounters with various women, often without their consent. This addiction strained many of his personal relationships and overshadowed his professional achievements. Despite some efforts to seek help and counseling towards the end of his life, Crane's reputation suffered irreparably. His inability to control his addiction was seen by many as a significant factor contributing to his untimely death. The scandal surrounding his personal life had a profound impact on Crane's career. After Hogan's Heroes, he found it challenging to secure significant roles, with only a few guest appearances and minor roles in films. His return to television with The Bob Crane Show was short-lived due to poor ratings, and he eventually turned to dinner theater to maintain his career. His last role was in a production called Beginner's Luck, at the Windmill Dinner Theater in Scottsdale, Arizona, where he was staying when he was murdered. The decline in his career was steep, moving from a celebrated television star to performing in less prestigious venues, which reflected the industry's reluctance to associate with the potential scandal his personal life could invoke. On June 29, 1978, Bob Crane was found murdered in his Scottsdale apartment a scene that starkly contrasted the typically serene summer days in Arizona. Crane's body was discovered by his co-star, Victoria Ann Barry, after he failed to show up for a scheduled lunch. He had been bludgeoned to death with two severe gashes above his left ear and an electrical cord wrapped around his neck. The murder weapon, believed to be a camera tripod, was never found. This gruesome scene marked the beginning of a long and complex investigation into Crane's death, 
which remains unsolved to this day. The Scottsdale Police Department, lacking a dedicated homicide division at the time, faced significant challenges in managing the high-profile case. The crime scene was reportedly compromised. The Maricopa County Medical Examiner had to climb over Crane's body to examine the wounds, and Barry was allowed to enter the apartment multiple times, potentially contaminating evidence. Despite these setbacks, detectives focused on Crane's close associate, John Carpenter, who had visited Crane just days before the murder. Carpenter's rental car was impounded, and blood smears matching Crane's blood type were found, but without DNA testing available at the time, the evidence was not conclusive enough to charge him. John Carpenter emerged as a primary suspect due to his close relationship with Crane and their shared interests in photography and videography, which extended into more salacious activities. Despite the suspicions and circumstantial evidence, including a photo showing what appeared to be brain tissue in Carpenter's car, the lack of a definitive murder weapon and the initial mishandling of evidence hampered the prosecution's case. Carpenter was eventually arrested and tried for the murder in 1994, but was acquitted due to the inability to conclusively link the blood and tissue samples to Crane. Other theories suggested that Crane's promiscuous lifestyle, which involved numerous liaisons with different women, could have provided a motive for other potential suspects, including jealous partners. However, no substantial evidence has ever been presented to support these claims, leaving the true circumstances of Bob Crane's murder a mystery. Despite various investigations and re-examinations of the case using advanced DNA techniques, the identity of Crane's killer remains unknown, and the case is officially still unsolved. The enigmatic life and untimely demise of Bob Crane, from his zenith as a beloved television star to his scandalous collapse and the enduring mystery of his murder, paint a complex portrait of celebrity and tragedy. Through the exploration of his early success, personal battles, and the unresolved circumstances of his death, this video has traversed the highs and lows of his storied career, offering new insights into the enduring fascinations and dilemmas that surrounded him. The narrative of Crane's life, marked by notable achievements and marred by controversy, serves as a poignant reminder of the often hidden complexities that lie behind the public persona of our most celebrated figures. Thanks so much for watching the full video. If you'd like to see more content like this, just let us know in the comments. We'll definitely consider any video suggestions you have. And your likes and subscriptions to our channel are very much appreciated.